Uh, nowadays, document management is more a supporting capability. So it's no longer the front of something. Welcome to Architecture Corner, and today we have Claudio Reyes as a guest. Claudio, welcome. Oh, thank you very much. You are an uh, expert in document management. That's very true. This, the concept is called enterprise content management, but yes, document management is yeah. one of the capabilities there. I worked in Stockholm a mm. long time ago at a manufacturing company. It was before we had smartphones by your own device. We sat with desktop computers and using document systems to uh, handle the information about their products. Okay. What, what is document management like today? Uh, it's a difference. I mean, the, the difference is that what you're explaining is that you're literally using the document management facilities, but you're still applying on a physical paper. So you register a piece of document, but the actual outcome is still a physical piece of paper. That's been now erased. Now people are starting to trust the fact that we no longer need a contract as a written entity. I can send you a PDF file and you accept that sort of more and more. From a legal perspective, it's always been okay as long as you have the intention that you want to commit a contract. So I think what you're talking about is the difference is with a lot of new, more possibilities to exchange electronic formats also um, removes any boundaries that it used to be when it comes to document management. Uh, I know that uh, airline uh, pilots, they have a lot of documents with them. Mm. Now times they have an iPad Correct. with all the documents uh, instead of large and several binders. True and a bit false, because here's the problem. <laughs> a document by its own paper nature has always been a trustworthy sort of paper, because you can have it, you can see, you can touch it. An iPad can fail. So a lot of airlines, as you speak, so you're right, they do use as a primary source, but they always have a backup as a plan. And this is something new for document management as well. Because in the old world, you never had a, you already had a copy that you archived the original, and perhaps you submitted a, a, a copy to somebody else. But if you translate that analogy into the world of electronic document management, it doesn't work the same way. Yeah. Uh, you have the redundancy that you can make endless amounts of copies without losing the quality of a document. So that is a new change in a new direction. Do you still use paper documents as the original today, or is that also disappearing? Depends on what uh, branch you're looking for. For instance, the pharma pharmaceutical companies, they use the FDDA, the Federal, Federal Drug Administration, as the body of government that dictates their conditions. And they have been one of the few bigger companies or organizations that have accepted electronic uh, document as a submission. So they are quite sort of in the front phase. Then you have government bodies like typical Swedish ones. They will use uh, case management systems with document management, but all it boils down by the end of the day is to have the paper copy that you archive. So not everyone is on the same playing field. But if I do my tax uh, form, I don't use any paper anymore. Mm, that's an interesting one, absolutely true. Uh, yeah, Skatteverket have been also very, very, very sort of on the, on the cutting edge on trying to adopt the, the different kind of initiatives. And that's more to do with the trust and signatures of document. That's always been a big discussion. And the difficulty is that on a piece of paper, if I sign it, we all admit, we all trust that signature. On a biometrical level, you sign, sign on to a system and therefore you get it authenticated, and then you make a commit on a certain document. It should be more safe than if to just sign it, because anyone can replicate your signature. But still, people trust more the sign, written sign on a physical paper than they trust an electronic one. Uh, in the old days, we had a computer that was provided by the company you were worked for. Yeah. This is my pr private, <laughs> yeah. and I use it to access both my companies and our clients' information on this mm. device. So it's by your own device policy. Right, right. Uh, how does this impact document management systems today? 
This is true for America, not so true for the, the Swedish system, but you have something called the discovery phase. When you're in dispute with another company, and this quite often happens to multinational companies, they have to disclose all the information they have. So one interesting question could be, let's say that the uh, global company that we work for, <laughs> and they ask us to disclose everything. Does that mean you have to disclose your iPad as well? Or very is that a private or? Very good question. Uh, yeah. It's registered, but it's my. Private sort of information, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. yeah well, I, honestly, I don't know where that's mm. going. All I can say is that uh, I've actually had a conversation with a guy who worked for a gaming company, and they had a discovery phase. And uh, he did have some emails that dual accounts has his Gmail and his company account in one phone. And some of the, the content of the Gmail he didn't want to share with the, the lawyers because he felt it was private, it was his own. And that became a bit of a discussion, but after a bit of discussion back and forth, they agreed that they let him sort of submit the phone and they promised not to read his email. But I don't know if that was kept. <laughs> mm. So this is a little about the privacy angle we have been talking in a lot of different episodes of architecture before. Mm. Uh, when it's about documents management, one thing is to write a document. Correct. And then someone else would probably need to know something about it. Okay. <laughs> so how do you find information when you have a lot of mobile devices? Mm, that's because a... it's, the systems are mm -hmm. more scattered. You need them when you're not online. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need them on different devices. Yeah. Do you have the clients to do this? Let me give you a, 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 my, 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 my little point of view on this. Is that I, first of all, I differ between search and find. <laughs> the ability to perform a search is one thing. Then it's findability, is how when you get back a result, how you can work with that to be able to extract what you're after, really. So the devices are really good at searching, but they're not equally good at finding what you want. If you look on a, on a, on a, on a, on a desktop version of a document management system, it is much more complex. You can do Boolean search, you can do all sorts of very complex search queries. Whereas in the iPads and the phones, they're just quite straightforward. So you will get too much documents back. You won't be able to use that. Yeah, it's more like a Google search. Correct. So it's a, it's a quality thing. I mean, in, in a good quality system, document management system, you don't get too many results. You get the results that you want, <laughs> that you need. Yeah. <laughs> in a bad one, you get lots of results because people either have tagged them uh, badly or because the search system is, is too wide on its net. Are document system more used today than uh, a few years ago, do you think? The big difference, in the 90s when the document manager was a peak, <laughs> it was a magic box. Everyone bought a magic box of document manager systems and uh, it was almost like the, the era of SAP. You had to be a specialist about it and it was a very interesting time, time to, to, to be a consultant at. Uh, nowadays, document management is more a supporting capability. So it's no longer the front of something. It's, for instance, a CRM system, and you can add document management capabilities. An ERP system, you can add invoicing as a document mm -hmm. management capability. So it's more uh, like an ad hoc rather than a front system. Uh, and the, the larger companies, have they been able to handle this change? Mm. I usually say for fun is that the problem with enterprise content management is the E. <laughs> they always have content management in every company. I've seen so many installations where they just have a prototype, a pilot, but it never goes company-wide. And one of the reasons is that this, this has nothing to do with technology. There's a big misunderstanding among a lot of practitioners and consultants. This is more to do with the culture, the social aspect on how you share and how you want to use information. So yes, the, 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 the companies that have succeeded in sharing is nothing to do with the document management system. It's more to do with the culture and the way they perceive information sharing. Uh, so uh, the social media that we are using more and more, mm -hmm. we're talking about Twitter, we talk about LinkedIn, mm -hmm. uh, other social networks. Uh, how, does that, how well does they fit into this document management paradigm? Uh, they're quite disruptive in, in a way. They're very disruptive in the sense that in the, ninth, the end of the middle of the 90s, a lot of the systems were web publishing systems where it was one side only. You had a producer of the content, then you had the consumers, and that's it. And the producers were 
typical uh, uh, sort of side of, they came from a printing sort of uh, uh, background and just utilized the same uh, form in a sort of digital world. It's more academic tradition that you had one Source. researcher that published his paper to a number of people. Exactly. But the social aspect of it is that nowadays it goes both ways. So anyone can publish. So the ability to publish is, has been taken away of its sort of uniqueness and the ability to be able to say that I've done this particular piece of work. Because nowadays if I find something that I like, I find a, a piece of a PowerPoint or something from, 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 a, from, a, from a colleague, I use that in my deck afterwards. I do, of course, credit him for it. But that's the way the new media has been challenging now. Because you no longer own and possess the publishing channel of your content. Now it's been more sort of um, interwoven with other people's ability to use content. So that's a big difference. Yeah, so you publish more on SlideShare to share with your colleagues and customers than you share inside. Exactly. Yeah, that, that will be the way of seeing the new wave of, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah true. And what do you think that the customers should do? The companies should do? Different companies are in different stages here, but the, the general consensus I think is a lot of people are, for instance, writing a policy on what you are allowed to use in social media under the flag of the company. Uh, are you allowed to make public statements or not? That's one thing. There's a lot of policies around that area. Uh, the other thing you have is that, and a lot of companies are looking into, there's a whole generation of mergers and acquisitions among companies at the moment. Following that tr tradition, instead of seeing each other as a counterpart, they see each other as collaborational partners. Therefore, document management, the life cycle of document management, may commence at one end of a partner, <laughs> continue to the other one, and finish off on the third one. So, but it's still perceived as one unanimous document management life cycle. So that's the big challenge and the new sort of way of thinking. Yeah, and what do you think they should do about it to solve this problem? Um, oh, <laughs> if I had one solution only, then I would <laughs> be glad to make it away. But my, my, my usually sort of, it, it boils down to three things in my opinion. It's to look at what is time consuming. In the same way that you have your invoices flow, you have the, the information flow. How make sure that the, the, the information always flows uh, smoothly and quickly. Don't have approvals for things that aren't necessarily needed. Just make sure that you have a workflow that does the work effectively. Secondly, it's make sure that the sources, the single source of truth, becomes the single cause of truth. A lot of people use uh, the G drive, they use Dropbox, and that's fine. But as long as we all agree that there is one central repository that we trust. And then thirdly, the, 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 the other one is that make sure that whatever you are in a document management mode, do not just try to transform the paper world into the document management. Try to think digitally, how you, you use the document in a digital way and have that sort of mindset. And this is more than just documents and papers today, because we are now recording a video. It will be a podcast. Very true. We may have a transcript. That's on the more physical paper. True, very true. Are those systems that you've been working with capable to handle those sources of information? That's an interesting topic. I was talking to a friend of mine that works for a large um, uh, American legal company. And when they have um, teleconferencing between clients, they sometimes record these sort of events. And the question is, what's being captured there? <laughs> are we, to, are we to utilize that as material for the case itself, or is it just an informal conversation? So that's where, the, where you draw the line. Can you submit a transcript of a teleconference as an official document, or is it just the way it's supposed to be on a, a spontaneous conversation that should not be recorded for the posterity. I mean, mm. If you look at the journalist, they record often their interviews True. and then they write about it and they probably keep this for a long mm. time. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true. Uh, that, 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 that's another way of seeing it, but my, 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 my take on this is that not many solutions on the company side have this desire to verbally formulate something and it becomes a document. Usually document management, is maybe because the business is a bit more boring, <laughs> uh, we don't see it that way. Like, we just want to work with, we want to get rid of the papers. That's our biggest challenge. So the spoken word 
it's nothing that has been on the agenda of, of, of document management to try to convert that. So sorry, not that I've seen. So a lot of people working with Agile development, they say that they don't do documentation. Mm, that's very true. Yeah, and I've heard that. how will that influence, how, what, what kind of impact will this have on document management system if you don't document things? Interesting question. I mean, uh, again, difficult to have a, a generic point of view. The only thing I, I would say is that the reason that you document, you need to have always have a recipient, a, a purpose to, to document. If you have a legal requirement, like in the pharmaceuticals, they, they can't get away with the fact that even if they run a full percent agi agility, it's still part of the deliverable that they should document what they do. Otherwise, that code, that program, will not be in compliance with the pharmaceutical legal requirements. So, in that case, that makes sense and it's simple. But in the other cases where you can sort of have the documentation for just looking for bugs or for understanding how the system works, that is a difficult call. I mean, I, I can't give you any good directions on where to go on that. So, it's a bit out of my hand, out of my topic, to be honest. Yeah. Hmm? Thank you very much for uh, discussing document management in the mobile world. Mm, and you. I hope you see you in the future. I certainly will. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for making the introduction music to this ah. series. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for viewing this episode of Architecture Corner. And see you next week.